Игорь Чубаров. Coming here. Игорь Чубаров is a philosopher uh, uh, who teaches at the Moscow State University uh, and uh, is also a co-editor of the Logos uh, journal uh, published in Moscow. Uh, uh, Igor uh, is a specialist on uh, uh, in, uh, Russian Avantgarde and uh, recently published a book which is called Collective, I don't know how to translate the word, sens sensitivity. sensitivity, sensibility, collective sensibility, uh, theories and practices of the left wing uh, Avantgarde. So the, the talk is it's a very long title, I'm sorry. Uh, the Critique of Violence is a Transcendental Ontological Project and its Media Aesthetic Realization in the Russian Web of Thank you. Thank you for inviting me and for this you know, chance to, to speak. I will talk about the problem of violence as a philosophical problem, as a transcendental pro problem, and uh, well, this problem of uh, ability of violence, of uh, probability of violence meets difficulties. I mean, any attempt to understand violence at its level uh, almost uh, uh, takes it as uh, a, a given thing. And uh, uh, our task become part of the powers of the forces which are beyond this reflection. This is why for Levinas, uh, violence could be only resolved through discourse. Nonviolence uh, became part of the, of the sublime. Uh, in the concept of René Girard, concept of violence, uh, the solution of uh, Levinas somehow oversaw violence in the in the you know gods in s s s making the other uh, sacred and uh, seeing I mean, and forming the idea of God in famous mythological and religious concepts, the idea of God, the notion of God uh, that we have in you know everyday uh, consciousness, in uh, is is a result of historical secularization which is not uh, only about the loss of faith, rather forgetting its roots, uh, because we're afraid of the price we would have to pay for the uh, unfair deeds we do, I mean, for murders. Uh, but I mean, when, when we make uh, those violent actions sacred uh, by moral regulations and legal uh, provisions, they serve as basis for this political and legal system of the contemporary world, which supports this double uh, forgetfulness. Uh, Walter Benjamin uh, viewed uh, div violence as uh, divine violence, uh, rethinking uh, theology in a materialistic way. Uh, using his essay on uh, the critique of violence uh, from 1921, and we're uh, bringing back Benjamin in our re uh, presentations, we don't want to make it, you know, neo Benjamism. Uh, we probably should start from the point where Benjamin himself stopped and uh, Jacques Derrida, uh, who deconstructed Levinas and Heidegger texts, uh, Agamben, uh, who stopped at mystifying Carl Schmitt, mystification, uh, mystificating, sorry, Carl Schmitt and uh, René Girard. But today I'll speak more about Zizek, and I, uh, I would like to, you know, step aside like Benjamin do every time you get ready for a presentation and uh, start thinking that you have some, you know, problem zone and you're going to a conference and everything is so so rational. But uh, then something happens. Like yesterday when I was coming here from Moscow uh, by Sapsan because I spilled something over my laptop, I 
told myself I should not get ready for this uh, presentation and listen to the radio. And the first thing I hear, uh, some old man whose last name was Podzizhikov, uh, says that his dog ha can speak and use human speech. And it sort of, you know, sobered me up. Every time you want to speak about Zizek, you have some, you know, Podzizhikov uh, old man who winks at you. Okay, let's get, get back to our presentation. Zizek wrote a whole book on this problem, and not even one book, but several books. And he uh, took the Benjamin's text in the end of this book and in a brutal form tried to uh, bring this leftist mystic uh, to justify revolutionary terror. Uh, in the way he sees sovereignty. And uh, although uh, this Slovenian philosopher doesn't, doesn't give anything new, doesn't add anything to Derrida and Agamben, uh, but uh, when he speaks about the uh, Nazi Nazis and uh, revolutionary terror, maybe his point needs to be discussed here. According to Zizek, uh, divine violence according to Benjamin, uh, is different from a Holocaust as a mythical violence, only because the Nazis uh, uh, had state institutions using this violence to achieve uh, legal state goals. But it's, uh, does, uh, logic does not uh, explain why the Nazis wanted to hide Holocaust uh, in their official rhetorics. I think that Zizek's key mistake is uh, using English uh, translation of Zur Kritik der Gewalt, and uh, maybe uh, that it makes him less responsible. He speaks about uh, uh, d divine violence overlapping uh, the biological violence. Those who were removed from the uh, Earth's surface uh, by divine vi violence, they, they were not sacrificed because they were not uh, honorable enough to be dedicated to, to God. What was their guilt? Because they, they, just, they were just leading natural life. Divine violence purifies the guilty, not of guilt, but of law, because the law uh, is only reduced to the living. It cannot go beyond life. Uh, and I'm, I'm, of course, uh, quoting the Russian translation, while the interpreters are using the English translation. Uh, in Benjamin does not speak about natural life. He speaks about simple life or bare life. But we're not going into details. Uh, there are some more important uh, details that uh, brought out this Zizek mistake or his, him being very rough or rude. He, uh, well, uh, uh, the victims of the mythical state violence are, n are not guilty, and their guilt uh, blosses, blosses Leben as bare life. Uh, it is translated as bare life. Uh, the point is not this li that this life is uh, common or natural. But uh, this life, uh, well, the, the value of this life is uh, artificial. Uh, and for Benjamin, uh, the most important thing is the difference between the bare life uh, captured by biopolitics uh, bio of a legal power, and this is this what makes it guilty, and a human being living in his innocence. Well, the difference. Uh, is that the, if myth, mythical violence is aimed at this bare life, which is a subject of manipulation for the state, the divine violence as bloodless annihilation is aimed at those who practice mythical violence uh, using legal and moral uh, regulations. This mythical uh, violence speaks of uh, life. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm quoting Russian uh, uh, translation of Benjamin. It starts with a, a quote from Kurt Hiller. Uh, 
above happiness and fairness of being is uh, being as such design uh, an sich. Uh, and Benjamin writes after that, uh, the, the, the uh, later is wrong and uh, we need, uh, we should not seek for the uh, basis of the thou shalt not kill in, in the sense uh, that this deed, what does this deed does to the God and to the murderer himself. Uh, we should not claim uh, that li uh, this, that being is above fair being if we understand being as bare life. Well, the higher, well, the, the more mythical value, value or uh, mythical violence values life, the more easier uh, it is for this violence to take this life away. Mythical violence, according to Benjamin, is bloody power over mere life for its own sake. Divine violence, violence uh, pure power of all life for the sake of the living. End of quote. Uh, violence for the sake of the living relieves the uh, human soul, uh, or what he called uh, a expression, human expression, uh, a word of pure language, its name. Uh, the spirit as, it, as such, its true media, media, uh, media character, bare life is bound to be uh, destroyed. It is only supported by the state and, and law, philosophy, r religion, and moral. Uh, but it is destroyed not by the divine violence, but by this mythical violence. Uh, divine violence opposes the idea of light itself. It's nothing but an idea, like uh, Heidegger understand it, uh, understand it, understands it in design. I, I would even su uh, suggest that Benjamin's Göttliche Gewalt uh, is a critique of Heidegger's design. And I think it's a key difference uh, between Benjamin and Agamben's approach. By breaking this link between life and law, Benjamin does it not to uh, see them both as pure in the human practice, uh, promising future to, this, uh, to the humankind, but he wants to decline them both, uh, to, to denounce, sorry, to denounce them both. Um, uh, I don't think, I, I would quote, uh, translation into Russian, or we quote it into English. The spiritual uh, restitutio in integrum, which, uh, which introduces immortality, corresponds to a worldly restitution that leads to an eternity of downfall. And the rhythm of this eternally transient worldly existence, transient in its totality, in its spatial, but also in its temporal totality, the rhythm of messianic nature is happiness, for nature is messianic by reason of its eternal and total passing away. To strive for such a passing away, even the passing away, away of those stages of men that are nature, is the task of world politics, whose method must be called nihilism. So um, Zizek, uh, well, it, uh, in vain, uh, thinks that this divine uh, violence of Benjamin is not something of the general rehearsal uh, before the uh, last judgment. Uh, Benjamin didn't believe in God, but you can not believe uh, in different ways. And, and the fourth part one can say that we can say violence is a new idea of purity of mind because the inimmeasurability of it, because when you talk about the, the spiritual measure that um, sort of hints on the 
attitude to the, empir to the empirical um, expression of violence, which because when it becomes negative, the ideas of violence aren't negative, so it doesn't destroy anything empirically or the antique idea of it. Kantian ideas of God and immortality should be sort of thrown off the Olympus of philosophy through reinterpretation of them. And the regulation of the idea of the pure pure mind makes them empirically impossible and un un understandable, ingraspable, which was the source of endless ideological manipulation of normativism. And as opposed to them, uh, lies and, and absurdity, violence and freedom are the ideas that are actually empirically possible. And Kantian ideas in this sense, God, lies, freedom, violence, uh, absurdity, immortality, with a hyphen, can be understood as officiating of our sensibility things within themselves, the true sources of endless his historical quarrels, uh, wars, and conflicts. Things or eternal uh, relationships that are obstacles to the endless application of means of nonviolent communication and should be, first of all, changed on the level of their production and their applied labor, and both on the level of organization and also on the level of quality of it. And art, in this sense, can be not just a model or experimental ground of this kind of penetration into the economical uh, mystery, as also Brigg used to call it, but the place where the creativity and labor could come together and never part, recreating the lost and the industrial labor, the wholesomeness of the experience that we call alienation. And a very rare experience of practical overcoming of violence uh, that can be that has been studied in the book of the collective sensibility of Benjamin that Arto mentioned which is left leftist uh, art production of the 20s of the, pre of the previous century that Benjamin uh, loved not for, uh, you know, not by accident. And there's been a number of works of his dedicated to it. And the highest expression of his media language and the author as a producer and the uh, similarity uh, has been in the, in the an analyzation of the works of Ziga Vertov, Lubov Popova, Stepanov, Rochenko, Tretikov, and so on. And we believe that the idea of Russian communistic avant-garde, if we can still talk about it as, you know, you can talk about some uh, separate epoch like Barocco, if it consisted not in overcoming, but in pointing out of the totally defining art uh, and suppressing discourse of art that supported the structure of violence. When we talk about overcoming violence in the leftic avant-garde, we get the ideas and not nominal themes or stories, not just critiques or moral disdain to the expression of violence in some works of art, but their anti-violent structure that is expressed within the internal structure of the consumption and the creation of those works. And in this sense, the left avant-gardist items were models to work out the potentiality of a nonviolent walk of life and this and the so and this social dormitory. And the violence in this context is the loss of this wholesome life experience result and the artificial match of the autonomized, broken down social practices, labor consumption, uh, social practice and so on and so forth. But they could be and maybe were at some point of which is constantly being dreamed about and, and what the lefts dream about, the elements of the organic communist life, the quasi-natural character of which is simultaneously the extreme limit of, machi of machiniz machinerization, which doesn't become machinery in itself. And the violence as forcefulness of limitation of freedom is unacceptable, neither in itself but in the relation to the consciousness and, and realization of it, uh, as in the relation to the killed or raped person, not towards the killed or raped person, but towards God and towards the murderer or rapist, what are they going to do with it? And it should lead to liberation, 
not to the chain of understand, understanding acceptance, uh, which, uh, which is characteristic for mythological discourse. I believe behind this limitation, there is certain political anthropology, the, the concept of, of evil nature of human that can only be humanized only legally and um, religiously, or uh, in the understanding of this evil will of human being that has to do with their sins with their attitudes with the supernatural evil forces this quasi scientific concept quasi religious concept comes together in the control point idea in the upbringing of a human that is always an object of applications of talents of other people of humanizing that person but it's unclear where the humanizing sources come from, because, you know, at least, it, but at the same time, a human is a toy of some cosmic or, you know, superhuman uh, powers. But the inability to overrun the violence that Benjamin Wright wrote about, they find the basis for the critique of it is to find the pure of it. So, you know, regardless of some better goals that can justify it, violence interpreted not as a means to an end of this natural right is a violence nature of the right of the positive, which is expressed on the level of its pseudo-justified means, which in reality are still violent. And the reason for it is that to, to any justified application of violence, apart from apart from uh, application of punishment, we get some added value of violence, the pleasure of uh, enforcing it, that both law and mythology try to mask it as its inner, in inner sense, which expresses itself through, through this uh, wrathful manifestation of being of gods. Uh, and the latter has nothing to do with law, but actually is the opposition to, towards the reaching of law. And Benjamin described the relationship between the legislative and the constitutive as the mutually exclusive and, and basically um, potentially rotting of the of the overall order in order to recycle it again, restart it again. And a critique of violence, Benjamin was looking for purity, not as a subst substantive definition, but as a revolutionary understanding within the practice, practice of purification that Agamben was writing about in, in the uh, second volume of his work. But it deprives, uh, it is deprived of its ritual character. Can this practice uh, be nonviolent? Can the nonviolental regulation of social conflicts overall uh, win over the, the, the modern existence? For Benjamin, this question is not a rhetorical one. He finds pure ways of resolving the conflict on both subjective level in, in, uh, in within solidarity and also on the objective level when he discusses the possibility of lies, of the acceptance, of acceptability of lies when the law doesn't uh, disdain our right to lie. This is a very unusual move, and i got to explain the problematics of art here. And simultaneously, this linkage between the political processes, the social economic processes, and media, media aesthetic processes that I've already talked about earlier. According to Benjamin, the pure mean of this nonviolental accomplishment of the conflict, the reaching the consensus in social life, is actually universal proletarian strike, of which the previous speaker spoke about so interestingly, that eventually crosses over into a revolution. Can one consider the idea of violence, can it be considered an idea or the idea of the leftist avant-garde as opposed to Zizek? Benjamin cannot go so far. It is possible only if the idea can be interpreted as a, as a constellation of the phenomenon of violence as an extremity or the attitude between its, between its extreme expression and the ideas that, that the ancient scientists put between the constellations and the stars or the forms of physical phenomena and the human relationships of those. And this an interesting perspective doesn't 
take us into mysticism or astronomy, astronomy, but talks about the similarities that should, according to Benjamin, come to replace the relationships between the mind and its logic, uh, for instance, in, in, in the hierarchical, logical, or but reach over into a different understanding of mind itself to offer a different ideology, like like an alternative and non-violent model of organization of experience. And it has been found by the protagonist of the Russian avant-garde of the Cubo futurism of the 1910s and the similarity uh, experience. The productionists of the 1920s were looking for a way of restoring wholesomeness of the experience and the functionality of the narrator on the level of the structure of the stories, but also by the nature of the productionist relationship in this. But on this way, they had to go through the violence as a critical discovery of those that hasn't been linked into the aestheticization or the self-apologeticness. Self Thank you. We'll have questions afterwards. If you have some uh, questions right away, Maybe to 